Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking a trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King, on you, Husky. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. Is your youngster a problem child in the classroom? Maybe it's because our schools themselves are such a problem. Maybe your child is sharing desk and textbook with another child who is also finding it hard to learn under such conditions. Nearly a million new students a year are entering schools that are sorely overcrowded and understaffed. 400,000 new teachers will be needed within the next 10 years. President Eisenhower has pointed the way by calling a special White House conference on education to take place in November. Meanwhile, states and communities are organizing their own conferences to discuss local school problems. Carry the ball for your community. Write for free information on how to hold a community conference. Write Better Schools to West 45th Street, New York 36, New York. Remember, better schools build better communities. This message is brought to you as a public service. Sergeant Preston and his great dog, Yukon King, were on their regular patrol. The Mountie was traveling without his dog team. A fresh fall of snow lay in an unbroken blanket on both sides of the hard-packed trail to Whitehorse. A few miles from town, King suddenly halted. <laughs> he began to dig in the soft snow while Sergeant Preston watched. Presently, part of a Hudson's Bay blanket was revealed. Find something, King? I'll help you, boy. Easy now, fellow. Don't get too rough. We'll see what's buried in the snow. A few moments of hard work brought the discovery that the blanket had been wrapped around the body of a dead man. Sergeant Preston's face became grim when he saw that the dead man wore the uniform of the Northwest Mounted Police. Great Scott King, this man's been murdered. <laughs> a little later the same morning, Jeb Larson, who had recently arrived in Whitehorse and taken a job in the newspaper office, came into the now deserted dining room of the hotel. Mary Baker, the wife of the hotel's owner, greeted Larson with a warm smile. Where's your husband, Mrs. Baker? He had some business at the bank. He'll be back soon if you want to talk to him. Oh, there might be others around when your husband arrives. And uh, you wouldn't want anyone to hear what I have to say. I, I don't understand. Mrs. Baker, from now on, I intend to live in this hotel without charge. But, Mr. Larson... Tell your husband that. And tell him that I also intend to eat here without charge. Mr. Larson, I haven't finished, Mrs. Baker. In addition to free room and meals, I expect to be given a share of your income every week. You must be out of your mind if you think Mrs. that we're... Mrs. Baker, going... as a newspaper man, I've seen much of the world. And I've known many people. I know that most of us, at one time or another, make a mistake. Sometimes our mistakes are costly. Very costly. What do you mean? Your husband made a mistake. He killed a man. No. No, that's not true. Oh, but the expression on your face belies your statement. Bart is not a murderer. Mrs. Baker, we both know that Bart would pay for his mistake by hanging. If he were caught. You, you... If I told the law what I know, I'd be paid a reward. And on top of that, I'd be given a bonus if I were to turn over the story to the newspaper. You see, in addition to my moral obligations, there's cash involved. The moral obligations I could forget. But I cannot afford to pass up the chance to... Earn a few dollars. So, if Bart pays you, 
You'll keep secret what you know. That's right. It's blackmail. Perhaps. You tell your husband what I've just told you. I'm sure he'll see the wisdom of meeting my terms. It'd be much wiser to share what he has with me than to lose everything. His life included. You, you, I'll meet Bart at his convenience uh, to discuss the terms more specifically. Sergeant Preston came at the White Horse heavily burdened. Over his shoulder, he carried the body of a fellow policeman wrapped in a blanket. Strong though he was, the Mountie was near the point of exhaustion when he reached the coroner. After giving instructions, he went to the office of the constable. I saw you going into the coroner's. How far did you carry the body? Only about a mile, but it seemed like ten. Well, where's your pack? I left it in the cabin. That old shack north of town? Yes, I just passed the shack when King made his discovery. I couldn't carry both my pack and the dead man, so I left the pack. Well, we could have sent a sled for the body. I wanted to bring him in myself, Constable. You see, uh, he was one of us. One of us? Yes, he was from the Eastern Division. His name was Blair. Here's the identification I took from his pocket. Blair, huh? A long way from home. I heard about him before I left headquarters. He was on a leave of absence. He requested to leave so he might come here to White Horse on a special mission. Something he wanted to handle personally. There was a query about him because he'd not been heard from. Poor Blair. You know the cause of death? Yes. He was shot through the heart. Murder. Right. The killer must have been close. There were powder burns on Blair's clothing. And we've a job to do. Are there any tracks? No, Blair's been dead for some time, probably several weeks. I can't tell just how long, because the cold weather preserved the body. You know why Blair wanted to come to White Horse? Perhaps his mission might give us a lead. No, I don't know, Constable. I'll try to find out by communicating with the Eastern Division. Meanwhile, this might give us something to work on. Oh, what's that? Part of an official pardon. It was in Blair's hand. Yeah. Most of it has been torn away. All the information's gone. The name of the pardoned man and the crime for which he was pardoned. Do you think the killer took the missing portion? So it would seem. If Blair had a warrant for someone's arrest, there might be a motive for the murder. But a pardon... Before a pardon can be issued, there has to be a conviction. That's true. Blair was undoubtedly on his way to let the killer know that he'd been pardoned. He was shot before he could explain his mission. Your reasoning is logical. The killer probably knew nothing about the pardon until after the murder. And at best, that's only a theory. You know of anyone in White Horse who might be a fugitive from the East? Well, Sergeant, there are a lot of fugitives in White Horse well as in the rest of the Yukon Territory. That's right. No, I can't name anyone in particular. There's probably nothing we can do until we have word from the Eastern Division. Oh, just a moment. I see a man who might be of help. Oh? Did you notice a man who just walked past the window? Yes. Why? His name is Larson. He works next door in the newspaper office. Think he could be of help? It's possible. He's been in White Horse for only a few weeks. But in that time, he's learned a lot about the people who live here. Where is he from? I think he came directly from the East. I'm told he worked in Ottawa, Toronto, Montreal, many other places. Now, if you think it worthwhile, we'll go next door and see what he has to say. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. It's a hit! There it goes into the right field stands! It's a homer! Oh, boy, kids, what fun it is at the ballpark. Come on out to the game. Come now as guest of a major or minor league team. It's your chance to get free baseball tickets. If you are 12 years or younger, you can see a major or minor league baseball game free with a paying adult like mom or dad. Bring the whole family and make a big day of it. This very day, or first thing tomorrow morning, you can get a free baseball ticket. No mailing, no waiting. It's right inside a package of Quaker Puff Wheat or Quaker Puff Rice or Muffet Shredded Wheat. Or buy Quaker Paco 10 and get two free baseball tickets. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Hurry to get your free baseball ticket in the special package of Quaker Puff Wheat or Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. Now to continue. Sergeant Preston and the constable talked at length to the reporter without learning anything to aid in solving the Blair murder. Meanwhile, the noonday crowd filled the dining room of the hotel and kept Mary Baker busy serving meals. It was some time after noon before she had a chance to tell her husband about Larson's threat. The two were in Baker's office. 
Yeah, there's no doubt about it, Mary. Larson has me backed against the wall. That man... I'll never forget the way he sat there making his demand. I should have known better than to run away. The world's not big enough to hide a man who's wanted for murder. But you were framed. The cards were stacked against you. I couldn't prove it, Mary, so I was convicted. If I hadn't escaped from jail, my term would have been half served by this time. In another ten years, I'd have been a free man. But now, if I'm caught, well, twenty years starting now would be the rest of my life. Oh, Bart. If Larson tells the law in the East where to find me, I might get even more than 20 years. Oh. I don't know what they do to convicted killers who break out of jail. Might even hang me. Oh, no. I can't go back. That's all there is to it. I can't face it. Just when everything was going so good. I, I'd almost forgotten you were a fugitive. I hadn't forgotten it, Mary. I'll never forget it. I wonder how Larson knew about my, my past. He, he didn't say. If Larson were out of the way... But... What are you thinking of? A man has to defend himself, Mary. No, no, Bart. I know what you're thinking. You mustn't do it. We'll pay that. And that's all we can do. We'll... Who is it? Larson. I want to talk to you, Baker. Now we'll learn how much he wants. Come in. I'm sorry if I'm breaking up a cozy little family conference. I've told my husband what you said, Mr. Larson. Oh, good. Now, Bart and I must have a conference. A private one, if you don't mind, Mrs. Baker. My wife has a right to hear whatever you say, Larson. You may tell her later if you wish. I'll go. <laughs> your wife might not understand the situation. She understands it perfectly, Larson. The situation has changed since I talked to your wife this morning. What do you mean? You must do more than I thought to keep your secret. Larson, let me ask you just one question. Well? How did you learn about me? Oh, Baker, it's unethical for a newspaper man to divulge his sources of information. Don't tell me you have ethics. Frankly, no. I have neither ethics nor conscience. So I'll tell you how I know about your past. As a matter of fact, what I tell you will lead into the main purpose of this visit. A few weeks ago, when I was hiking to examine the scenery north of town, I, I found a dead man on the trail. He did? He was a police officer. I went through his pockets to learn his identity and found a warrant for your arrest. What? My arrest? Yes. The officer had come all the way from the east to take you into custody. Well, I wonder how he learned where to find me. There was a letter in his pocket from a man named Alex. A friendly letter telling about a visit to Whitehorse. Your hotel was mentioned as an excellent place to stay. You and your wife were described. Oh? Yeah. Here's a letter. You might like to keep it. It speaks very well of you. But now to uh, return to the main issue, Baker. How did this, this officer die? He was shot. What? Shot? Now, whether you shot him or not is beside the point. Oh, no, I didn't. The point is that I buried him in the snow. And I said nothing about finding him. Because you intended to use what you'd learned to blackmail me. Yeah. Yes, I remained silent for a few weeks to study your business and determine how much I should ask you to pay for my silence. This morning, the dead man's body was found by Sergeant Preston and that dog of his. Oh, I've heard of Preston and King. So have I. They share a fine reputation. I've uh, talked to Sergeant Preston. You? Does he know about me? Not yet. He's going back to where the Monty was killed to look for evidence. His dog may pick up the scent of the killer. After several weeks? I don't know. I've heard of some remarkable performances by that dog. He might pick up my scent. It's conceivable that I might be arrested for the murder. That's why I must act tonight. As for you, what about me? Tomorrow, when Preston returns to town, he'll report what he has learned to the Eastern Division. He'll be told that a warrant was issued for him. You know what that means? Uh, yes. That's why you must help me tonight. Help you do what? Dispose of Sergeant Preston and his dog. You mean... Kill him. No. You don't. It'll only be a matter of days before Preston comes for you. If he doesn't arrest me, someone else will. I'm through. There's no way out. Oh, yes, there is. Baby. The Eastern Division knows where to find me. When it's known that the man who came for me is dead, someone else will come with a warrant. By getting rid of Preston, you'll have a couple of weeks to make your escape. Escape? There is no escape. Oh, but there is, Baker. Sell your hotel. I'll buy it at a fair price. Clear out of the Yukon. Go to the States. Change your name. Should have done that in the first place. I'd be a murderer. Well, what are you now? My conscience is clear. <laughs> What good is a clear conscience if they hang you? My, my wife. She'd hate me. She doesn't hate you now. Because she knows I'm innocent of the crime in the East. But if I help you murder... She Sergeant... needn't know that. She needn't know a thing about it. Why? Well, I... I don't know what to do. I'm telling you what to do. In the States, you'll start a new life. With a bankroll, you can buy a farm or a ranch. Or you can open another hotel. You'll be free. You have cash enough to buy this place? I'll give you a fair price. I have some cash. I can borrow from the bank. Now listen to me. You have more to lose than I have. 
and more to gain. In a couple of hours tonight... Larson talked long and convincingly. He brushed aside all doubts in the mind of the hotel owner. Mary, I have an errand to do. Oh? I should be back by midnight. It's a bad night, Bart. The wind is blowing hard. Do you have far to go? Please, Mary, don't ask questions. I can't tell you anything about it. You... You've got to trust me, honey. More than ever before, you've got to trust me. I do trust you, Bart. Mary returned to the dining room, and Bart went to his office. He buckled a gun belt around his hips, and then took a heavy six-gun from a drawer of his desk. He examined it, loaded it, and dropped it into the holster. He was joined a moment later by Jeb Larson, who also was armed. The two men headed along the windy trail toward the north. The wind and the night were filled with voices. Voices from the present and voices from the past echoed and re-echoed in Bart Baker's brain. We find the defendant guilty of murder as charged in the indictment. I trust you, Bart. I'll never believe that you are guilty. Bart's emotions were strained to the breaking point. He no longer had a sense of values. Jeb Larson, striding along the trail at his side, was grim and silent. And then suddenly, Jeb Larson's voice cut through the phantom voices like a knife. Hey, Baker. Oh, what? We're getting close. There's a cabin just ahead. Oh, yeah. Sure enough. Stop here a minute. There's a light in the cabin. Yeah. That makes it easy for us. We'll be able to see Preston and this dog. Is your gun ready? Yeah, it's ready. Now, here's how we're going to work this. You go rap on the door. Tell Preston you want to talk to him about the dead man he found on the trail. What are you going to do? I'll join you. But I don't want to take a chance on that dog of Preston's. I told you he might have caught my scent near the body. The dog might jump me. Mm-hmm. Now you tell Preston that you're afraid of dogs. Ask him to tie King before you talk. Then what? I'll join you and then we'll both shoot. You take the dog, I'll take the mounting. I, um... Well, what's the matter? I'll try to go through with it. Well, you better go through with it. Listen, just remember what you're doing is in self-defense. It's the Mountie's life or yours. I suppose it is. Now get going. Sergeant Preston. Oh, hello, Baker. Come in. Thank you. Quiet, King. What are you doing this far from your hotel? I wanted to talk to you, Sergeant. Well, sit down. I'm glad to see you. I intended to stop at your place and say hello since I had the chance. How's your wife? Uh, my wife? Yes. Oh, she's fine. I suppose Larson or the constable told you I'd sleep here tonight. That's right. Hey, that, that dog. Oh, King won't hurt you. King stood motionless, ears back and fangs half bared. His keen senses caught something ominous in Baker's presence. He tried to tell his master that danger was in the air. Be quiet, King. Sergeant, I, I'm afraid of dogs. King must sense that fear. Would you mind tying him? All right. Here, King. I'll fasten him to this iron hook in the fireplace. I'll, I'll talk as soon as your dog's tied. He's tied. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, kids, picture yourself at the ball game right now. The bases are loaded with two out. The star hitter steps up and you see him in person. You get the thrill of seeing him hit that homer. Get in on the fun. Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Yes, you can go free if you are 12 years or younger and bring a paying adult like mom or dad. It's so easy to get a free baseball ticket. It's right inside a package of Quaker Puff wheat, Quaker Puff rice, and Muffet shredded wheat. You get two free tickets in Quaker Pack O' Ten. The tickets tell you the names of the teams and the dates. Bring the whole family and have the time of your lives at the ballpark. Remember, no mailing, no waiting. You can get as many free baseball tickets as you want. They're inside packages of Quaker Puff wheat or Puff rice, Muffet shredded wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. Get yours right away. Now to continue. King knew the scent of men who think of murder, and he caught that scent when Baker entered the room. When Jeff Larson entered, the scent was more than doubled in intensity. Well, Larson, I'm having lots of company. What brings you here? I... 
I want to talk to you about guns, Sergeant Preston. Guns, eh? If I list one of mine. King, be quiet. You should never point a gun at anyone, Larson. <laughs> it's dangerous, isn't it? If King weren't tied, he'd jump you for pointing a gun at me. Better lower it. You're worrying him. Bart will fix King so that he'll never worry again. Draw your gun, Bart. Just a minute. What's the game? Steady, Preston. I'll fire if you reach for your gun. You're going to fire anyway, aren't you, Larson? I can think of only one reason why you'd shoot me. You're afraid I'll learn the truth about Constable Blair, is that it? Maybe. Blair? Is that the man who was killed? Yes, Baker. You know him? I, I did know him. Then you must have been in the East before you came here. You're the man Blair was coming to see. I didn't shoot him. No, I don't believe you did. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been surprised when you heard his name. Did you shoot him, Larson? What if I did? You'll hang for it. Oh, no, I won't, Preston. You see, you're not going to live long enough to tell what you know. So you brought Baker here to help. You must have been desperate. You must have thought we'd learned the truth. I'm sorry, Preston, but it's either you or Baker and me. we got to get rid of you. There'll be another man in my place, Larson. You can't get away with murder. As for you, Bart, I thought you were all right. I'm disappointed. Just shows that even you can make a mistake, Preston. Baker's wanted for murder in the... I didn't kill that man. The law said I was guilty, but I was innocent. There's no reason why I should pay for a crime I didn't commit. You know, Bart, I believe you. You're not a killer. You're too honest, too square to kill a man. Get the dog, Bart. King's helpless. He can't hurt you, Bart. I... Shoot him, then go back and tell your wife how brave you are. That'll do, Preston. This is the end of the street. No, no. Shoot that dog. Shoot! No, drop your gun, Larson. What? I can't go through with it. Drop your gun. Why, you... No! Okay. Give me that gun, Larson. No. Double-crossing coward, you turned on him. Oh, thanks, Barnes. Now I'll take your gun. Here you are, Sergeant. Quiet, King. I I couldn't go through with it. Oh, my arm. The bullet just snicked to you, Larson. Now, let's have the truth. What? How did Larson persuade you to come here to kill me? Why, it, it was that or go back to jail for 20 years for a crime I didn't commit. Larson was going to turn me in as a fugitive. Oh, you double crook. You know why Blair came all the way to Whitehorse to see you? Yes, he's the one who got evidence against me in the first place. Larson said he'd found out I was here and came to arrest me. He had a warrant. Did you see it? No, but Larson told me he saw the paper. The paper Blair was carrying was torn in two. A small part from the top of the document was in Blair's hand when I found him. Here, look at it while I untie King. There you are, boy. Guard that man, King. This, this was a pardon. That's right, Baker. You said you'd been convicted for a crime you didn't commit. After you escaped, Blair probably learned the truth. He wanted to give you your pardon in person. Ten years. I wonder how much of that time he spent in trying to locate me. You, Larson, you lying schemer. When you saw the pardon, you knew I'd been convicted and sentenced to jail in the East. You figured I wouldn't know I'd been cleared, so you blackmailed me. You lying crook, I could choke you. Stop. Take him off of me. When you thought the truth might come out, you tried to trick me into helping kill Sergeant Preston. No way. Wait. Hold it, bud. Let him go. Break it up. <laughs> the law will deal with Larson. <laughs> My throat is... He was going to strangle me. I'll put these handcuffs on you, Larson. Then we'll start for Whitehorse. When Bart returned to the hotel at midnight, his heart was light. And the haunting fear of capture that had been with him for ten long years was gone. Mary shared his happiness. Oh, Bart, it's almost too good to be true. Larson confessed everything when Sergeant Preston and the constable questioned him. Then he did kill Constable Blair. Yep. It took Sergeant Preston a long time, but he finally learned the truth. Oh, See, Larson was out hiking when he met Blair. Blair asked if he knew a man in town named Bart Baker. Larson wanted to know why the law was looking for me. He persuaded Blair to show him the pardon. Then Larson saw the chance to blackmail me. He pulled his gun in the mouth. He shot Blair. Then he got panicky. He snatched the pardon. Blair's dead fingers were gripping the top part, and it tore off. Larson didn't even know it at the time. He stuffed the paper into his pocket, dragged the body to the side of the trail, and buried it in the snow. He claims now that he didn't know what he was doing. Claims it was temporary insanity. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's going to be his defense when he goes on trial. But he'll never get away with it, Mary. He'll hang. Bart, tell me, why did you go out tonight with Lars? Honey, I... I was thinking. Well, I was going to do something. But when the showdown came, I... I just couldn't do it. I... Well, never mind, Bart. Don't you tell me. Let's say what Sergeant Preston always says. This case is closed.
Sergeant Preston will return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. The hills and canyons of the Old West echo the exploits of one of the truly great trailblazers of the mid-19th century, the daring and fearless Wild Bill Hickok. Back in the days when the West was young and ruthlessness was at the end of a six-shooter, Wild Bill began his career as an Indian scout. Later, he became a stage driver along the Santa Fe and Oregon Trail and was known as the greatest marksman of all. During the life of this famous Westerner, as a sharpshooting U.S. Marshal, we find spine-tingling adventure in the best tradition of the Old West. For when Wild Bill rides, excitement and suspense ride with him. So, get ready for action to live again through the historic era of two-gun justice. You can thrill to the colorful adventures of Wild Bill Hickok every Sunday with screen star Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his deputy Jingles on Mutual over most of these stations. When the express office in Selkirk was robbed of a bank shipment of cash... Sergeant Preston and Yukon King took over an unusual case. After visiting a sweet elderly lady who ran a boarding house, the constable was mystified when Preston carried away an empty dinner pail. Sergeant, what on earth could that empty dinner pail you picked up at Miss Stella's place have to do with this case? It may have a great deal to do with it, Constable. If what I think is true, you're in for the surprise of your life. In their attempt to solve the baffling robbery... Preston and the constable unwittingly became the momentary targets for a killer's gun. Can they escape being killed and turn the tables on the crooks? Be sure to hear this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat... And Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. <laughs> By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America. America.